Blessed be everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be talking about two Sabbaths which are coming up pretty soon at the time of this video and that is the spring and autumn equinox. So we're going to talk about working with the equinoxes from more of a inner work, uh, shadow work uh, perspective so that you can bring your inner world into the outer manifestation in a much more positive way. But before we go into that, I'm Sandra from mysterywitchschool.com. I'm the author of Crafting Your Wiccan Path and Tapping Into Abundance. And if you want to know more about Wicca and Witchcraft, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss any videos. And if you want to know where to start your witchcraft practice, but you just don't know where to start your witchcraft practice because there's just too much confusing uh, information out there, take a look at my free masterclass. The link is in the description field below this video and it's called How to Start Your Witchcraft Practice. At the time of this video, we've got some equinoxes coming up. In the Northern Hemisphere, it is the Autumn Equinox and in the Southern Hemisphere, it's the Spring Equinox. These uh, Sabbaths are also known as Marbon for the Autumn Equinox and Astara in the, for the Spring Equinox. And what I wanted to talk about was more about working with the energies of this time of the year on our inner life. Now, the equinoxes were celebrated by people from all over the world. The, order, the autumn equinox was really important because it was the second harvest. So again, this is reaping more of what has been sown making sure that there is enough food for everybody and that there'll be enough food to go around, particularly with the winter coming. In the Southern Hemisphere, it was about planting seeds so that you would have food to harvest in the autumn months. So there's, it's always about connecting with the earth. All of the Sabbaths have an earth-based connection. And we can also have that earth-based connection and we can certainly celebrate the Sabbaths. For a lot of us, particularly if we live in cities, we can feel a bit sort of disconnected from the Sabbath sometimes because we're not really part of that whole producing uh, food industry. And there's a big distance and maybe a lot of people and a lot of processes between us and our food. <laughs> so it can be something that we have to work out. There's a lot of videos on YouTube that can show you how to celebrate, how to decorate your altar, some of the things that you can do to celebrate the seasons. This video I wanted to talk about how you can use the seasons to work with the within. So we talk about as without, so within, or so within, as so without. It's actually what happens within ourselves that determines a lot of what happens outside of ourselves. So what sort of life we're creating comes from what sort of person we are or what sort of person we're being really. Not so much we are, but what we're being. And as above, so below, it's about what we think and what we believe comes down into reality and it actually comes down into who we are being. So these, these are, uh, Things that we say, you know, as above, so below, as within, so without, which is actually more the correct way of saying it. I think I said it backwards the other, <laughs> the first time I said it, is actually to do with our thoughts, our beliefs, what that creates inside of ourselves, and then what we put out into the world is a reflection of how we feel about ourselves and what we believe about ourselves. So we can use the seasons and the Sabbaths to help us work with this so that we can create what we want to create and be creators because that's what witchcraft is about. Which Witches create. <laughs> uh, magic is about creating. It's about connecting with ourselves as creators and bringing what we came here to bring with us and to do into a reality and to have an experience of creating and an, ex an experience of what can be created here. So if you are in the Northern Hemisphere at the time of this video, you'll be celebrating the autumn equinox and us here in the Southern Hemisphere where I am, we're celebrating the spring equinox. So I'll start with the autumn equinox. It's all about, well, both equinoxes are about balance. So they're about equilibrium. And when we want to walk a path that is more smooth and easier to walk, we try to keep the equilibrium. So you will we'll never be totally balanced. We can't. 
uh, we're always sort of like hovering like this. And at the equinoxes, which happen twice a year, we get to just be in that balanced state for a very short period of time. Or at least the, the, the planet does anyway. And then, of course, we're starting to wobble again. As witches, it's important that if we follow the hermetic principles, particularly the principle of rhythm, that we try not to get too out of rhythm. Okay, We don't want extremes of highs and lows. We want to keep an equilibrium so that we can maintain a little bit more of the harmony and more, more tempering of, of our lives so when we're not getting these extremes of emotions um, either way. And the equinoxes can help remind us of that. So the question to ask yourself from a, an inner work point of view at the autumn equinox is where am I balance wise right now? What's out of balance? And because it's entering into, well, it's part of the waning cycle of the year, you've got three months till the winter solstice. What in that time can you release or remove from your life that would help bring your life more into a state of balance? What loose ends can you tie up? What things could you maybe finish <laughs> uh, in the next three months and wrap up in the next three months that need finishing? Is there anything you, you need to discard or banish or uh, give away or clean up? <laughs> it's the perfect time for doing that. We talk about spring cleaning. I find autumn cleaning to be a little bit more uh, I resonate more with the autumn cleaning thing because it, to me it is about cleaning out and, and tying up things to get ready for the new growth that, that comes later in the year. So think about those sorts of things at the autumn equinox. Work with the colours of red, orange. They're really good colours to work with because they kind of resonate with the, the autumn leaves and the colours. Browns are a good colour as well. Uh, to, to really get into that, that depth of, you know, what am I releasing? What am I releasing? For those of you in the Southern Hemisphere, celebrating the spring equinox, we're planting seeds, okay? Some people may even be seeing some things sprout because maybe you planted some seeds in Imolk. But all of that inspiration that has come to us in the last six weeks of the Imolk season is now ready to be planted and we will start to maybe see some things starting to pick up in the spring season. So doing uh, planting of seeds. So in your life, when you're thinking about balance in your life, how, what needs balancing in your life and what seeds can you be planting to bring things into balance? What new things maybe that you can bring into your life to bring uh, things more into a sense of balance. To help inspire you, you might want to work with the colour green, the colour of growth, and work with the, the energies of, of planting. Like from a metaphorical point of view, what are you planting right now? What's being planted? Sometimes the idea for something, when we do magic, we're planting a seed. So even if you haven't taken any action at all, you've had an idea, you, you want to do something, you want to make change, so you're using magic. Magic plants the seed, and then the seed starts to grow. And the ideas that you get from the magic uh, are the actions that you take to help the seed grow. So right now, you may have a desire to bring something into your life or plant a new seed. You may have no idea how that's going to happen, but still do magic for it because the how will come. The universe will show you how. So even if you don't know how something's going to happen, but you know that you want to bring something in, then still do magic for it because spring is a really good time to be doing those sorts of spell work, particularly if you're working with the waxing moon cycle as well as the spring equinox energy as well. This doesn't mean that you have to do your growth spell 
on the spring equinox because again the equinox is about balance. I would wait until the moon starts waxing before I would do anything so doing it after the spring equinox and then when the moon starts to wax that would be a good time to do any growth spells or anything where you are planting your seeds. So think of this as being not just the outer world that you're trying to change. So it's not just cleaning up the outer world or planting seeds for the outer world, but how do you do this on an inner level as well? For the autumn equinox, it's great time to think about, well, what beliefs have I got that really aren't helping me? And in the spring equinox, it's for well, what beliefs would I like to have that would help me? And regardless of where you are in the seasons, you can do the transitioning of one belief, the unhelpful one, into the one that is more helpful through your shadow work. It's amazing when you look at nature that she's always balancing all the time. We tend to think that whatever hemisphere we're in and whatever season we're in, we're totally in that season and we forget that on the other side of the world or the other half of the, the hemisphere, I should say, they're actually ex experiencing the opposite. So there's always the light and the dark. There's always this um, balance between the yin and the yang, the waxing and the waning, the giving and the receiving going on all year round. <laughs> so in some parts of the world, we're giving through planting and in other parts of the world, you're receiving through harvest. And that's something that we do. And then in some, part, in some ways, the earth is giving when it's autumn and the earth is receiving in spring because we're doing the planting. So it's always this give and take between giving and receiving going on. It's it's not about just giving all the time. It's not about just taking all the time. It's about this, this beautiful balance between giving and receiving. And that's what keeps the planet going. The planet is constantly in this state of giving and receiving. But so are we when we work with the energies of the planet. We also give to the planet and receive from the planet. And she receives from us and she gives to us. So it is this beautiful time, this, this time of the year is really wonderful to focus or meditate on the giving and the receiving aspects of the, the planet and how energy works. It really does work that way. And if you find in your life that you're getting a lot taken from you, then maybe you need to learn how to receive. <laughs> If you find that you don't get much in your life, that you're in a state of lack all the time, then maybe you need to learn to give, and which may be tricky because you may say, well, I haven't got anything to give. Everybody's got something to give. It doesn't have to be a material thing. It can be something else that you can give. You can give energy, you can give love, you can give time, you can give things. So always look at that balance too. Where am I sitting with the giving and receiving? Am I giving too much? Am I receiving too much? Or am I taking too much? Uh, look at those aspects of your life at this time of the year too and see what needs to, have, where you think you might need more balance there and what the fear is regarding the opposite because people have a tendency to be the one or the other more predominantly and a lot of it is to do with the fear, you know. If I stop giving, you know, what's not safe about stopping giving? You know, and there's probably a lot of things that you probably would come up with there. There might be the fear of rejection. It might be the fear uh, that, that people will think that you're not a generous person. You may be a people pleaser, for example, and there's fears about that. If you're somebody who's too afraid to give, because maybe you've grown up in an environment where you haven't had much, there's been a lot of lack, then what's not safe about giving? And what may not be safe about giving is that if you give, then you end up missing out and losing. And so there's this fear that if I give, then I'm going to go without. And so understanding what the fears are 
around the giving and receiving for all of us. And sometimes that can swap too. In some areas you may be great at giving and other areas not so great at giving. Uh, you may be great at receiving in some areas and other areas you just can't receive at all. So these times of the year, the Sabbaths, are times when we think about all of these parts of ourselves. And particularly with the equinoxes, it's about bringing those things into to balance. So how can I bring the giving and receiving aspects of my life more more into harmony and more into balance and uh, working on your inner beliefs that may be stopping you from having that balance there because it's really important to be able to give and receive <laughs> it's it's actually important um, we have a very distorted understanding of spirituality and the giving and receiving thing is one of those distortions. I think a lot of the time we're led to believe that you're supposed to give all the time from a spiritual point of view, and that's just not possible. You have to receive in order to give, and you have to give in order to receive. It's, it's a cycle thing. And witchcraft is, some, is definitely something that can teach you that. And sometimes it can be you can be learn those lessons in a way that can be quite um, harsh too, but they're important lessons to learn. So I wanted to also do a shout out to all of those people who have been giving me super thanks and also the PayPal uh, donations as well. So if you are wanting to contribute to the life of this channel, uh, then you can uh, donate uh, either through the super thanks. You can also donate through PayPal. I've got a link for PayPal uh, in the description box as well. And uh, you can do it that way. I also want to thank everybody who is a part of Mystery Witch School uh, from a whole point of view. So all of the students in Mystery Witch School 101, which is my 12-month course on witchcraft, and also the Wheels of Empowerment students too, which is the shadow work and the chakra uh, courses that I run. And if you're interested in any of those, the links are in the description field below this video. If you like the video, hit the like button, share it with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe. I'm Sandra from mysterywitchschool.com. Blessed be.